So in this video, I'm going to explain how to make a web extension for Safari. So similar to how you make extensions on Chrome, you can also make extensions that, that work in Safari. And if you ha already have existing Chrome extensions, you can port them to Safari using Safari web extensions. Last time I showed you a Safari extension that was mostly written in Swift and that was native app extension. So if I go to, if I search for Safari native extension, you can see there are two types of extensions that you can make for Safari. Safari app extensions and Safari web extensions. So if I look at Safari app extensions, it says learn how Safari app extensions extend the web browsing experience in Safari by leveraging web technologies and native code. So most of the coding that you do in Safari app extensions, uh, you write your logic using Swift and you can you have a script that you can inject into Safari web view uh, th that you can talk to it uh, by your native code. And that way you can provide some part of your apps functionality into Safari as well. So now if we look at Safari web extensions, it says create web extensions that work in Safari and other browsers. So this, this is the main difference. The Safari web extensions are written in common format. So you write, uh, if you write extensions for Chrome already, you can port that uh, same code that will work as Safari web extension. So this is what I made here. So this email hunter app, it is a Safari web extension and it runs on Mac and iOS and iPad, all three platforms. So let's look at how to make a Safari web extension. And in the if you are following this channel, you know in the previous uh, video i showed you how to make an a safari app extension and uh, that was the tab snooze extension that i made so this does not work in I ios or ipad os because these safari app extensions are only for mac and they don't work on ios and ipad os only safari web extension uh, these work on all the platforms mac ios and ipad os you can use the same code for google chrome mozilla firefox or microsoft edge browsers because they are written in the same way so let's see uh this app that i've i've written uh, it's called i email finder it's called email hunter let me change this scheme real quick uh, manage the scheme and let me rename this to hunter as well so previously i wanted to call it finder but then i thought hunter would be more catchy so email hunter so this extension does very simple thing it uh, get it uh, looks at your active tab in safari and it finds out all the emails present on the on on the website and it'll give you uh, those emails in a list in a pop-up. Um, so currently there's no email address on this web page. So it's showing no emails on this page. So if I go to Mac rumors, for example, and I open this pop-up, you can see it extracted all the emails present on this website and it shows you this list nicely. I also have this uh, talk to developer button here that you can provide feedback to me. So let's see how uh, it looks in code. So creating uh, this Safari web extension is pretty simple. You go to file, new and project. And because this Safari web extension work works across iOS and Mac OS, you go to multi-platform and choose the Safari extension app and go next and you give your product name so I'll say email hunter and choose Swift 
and I click next I'm not going to create it again so I'm gonna cancel it but that's how you create this and once you create this you will have this hierarchy of folders made uh, shared app shared extension uh, iOS macOS in the iOS and macOS you generally don't have to do anything everything is already set up for you uh, in the app because there's no there's not going to be any app functionality uh, the app functionality is totally on the Safari extension side so we don't have to touch them and similarly in the shared app uh, portion we have some generic uh, things that are common to both iOS and macOS setup because we are not doing much actually anything in, in the app uh, we don't have to change this so the real change um, also like you want to change this HTML that uh, with the with the details of your extension uh, so it's easier for users to understand and your icon style and script for your main HTML and the main portion that you want to look at really is this shared extension folder here you will have this safari web extension handler so in case you want to talk to the native code from javascript you have this safari web handler that you can message to and you could process things in the native code if you want to and return a response to the js code but we are not going to use that as well because ours is a very simple functionality that relies um, only on the javascript to extract the emails and show it in the pop-up as you can see uh, the, the, in these resources the first one is locales for now we're not going to look at this and images are just your icons and the toolbar icon that you see on the safari toolbar so this manifest is an important one this is the file which defines the permissions and uh, what script are you using as background script what pop-up uh, html you are using for showing the pop-up on the top of safari when you click on the toolbar item and what are the icon files that's gonna be there for the uh, pop-up button icon for your app version number description the most important part is permissions and i've given the most generic permission possible that is uh, permission to read active tab the web page so we can extract the emails from the current web page we don't have to ask permission for all other tabs uh, because we're not interested in that uh, you can uh, ask permission for all the URLs and all the tabs, but that is not appropriate. The more permission you request, uh, more warnings and pop-ups Safari is going to put to the user uh, to for them to make a decision to allow or not allow your ex app extension to do that work. So best way to make this work is uh, get permission for the active tab so you can perform your actions on the current website and users will be willing to give that permission because they want to use your app extension so this is very safe permission to have so next let's talk about the pop-up we'll talk about background and content script uh, later uh, first we'll talk about this pop-up uh, we have this button in safari as you can see this email button uh, that is the and then when you click on this uh, button you see this pop-up and this is the pop-up in html that you see there uh, i have this body in html email hunter and a div that's id is email list and that's where i populate the email list that i got from the web page and this is the link that opens uh, user's email client to, to write a feedback for the app. And to accompany this uh, HTML, we have this popup.css that handles all the styling for the popup HTML, as you can see here. And finally, we have this popup.js that is the JavaScript for the popup.html. So let me reformat this a little bit uh, so it's easier to understand. 
so first of all i got this document or add event listener so i'm listening for dom content loaded event so whenever a website is loaded i'm going to call this uh, function called find emails let me move it here and this find emails function will execute a script that is uh, in my web extension that's called content.js and that is the script here so i'll come back to this let's not worry about this for now we will just go step by step so this uh, this call will execute content.js so let's go there so it just it calls get emails function that is here and this goes and searches for email for strings in the format of emails in the whole document.body.inner.html so the whole website body then what i'm doing is i'm sending a message of type found emails with attaching that emails as parameter and this currently background script is the one that listens for requests of type found emails and if found if it finds a request uh, of type found emails it sends another message of type read emails response uh, attaching those emails again but uh, for this purpose uh, where we are just sending the emails we don't actually need this background script to be the intermediary i wanted to show you that you can also have this background script uh, that you can use in web extensions but for now we will not use it we will directly call this uh, read res emails response in the content script and because our pop-up script is already listening so here you can see uh, it's listening for request and if it finds a request of type read emails response actually there is a response because uh, we are getting our email so i'm calling it a response so once we get this response you can see we get our email list uh, element from the html and we get all the emails from the request and we create a list in the html if we are not able to do that we'll just say no emails on this page and this is just a helper function uh, uh, that is helping us filter it so those are all the components that are present in uh, safari web extensions and you saw how they are working together to make this app to make this simple app here one more thing i wanted to show you is how easy it is to test this uh, web extension so you got this uh, your mac target ios target and you can also create this email extension target and run directly on your mac so let's try to run this target uh, it asks me to choose an application to run this extension on so i'll choose safari So it opens a new instance of Safari as you can see here. Uh, this is my main Safari, but uh, it opened a clone of Safari for debugging purposes and it loaded your extension as well. So you can test it out. And similarly, uh, you can also create a target for ios extension so to create that you go to new scheme and choose email hunter extension ios click ok and you got a new scheme for ios and you can choose your iphone and run directly on there not gonna show you but it works just like the mac so i'm going to put this uh, small project that shows you how to make a simple Safari web extension that works on Mac OS as well as iOS uh, into a Patreon post. So uh, you can download this sample project and uh, you can make your own changes or get help from uh, this project to get your extensions working 
uh, and running. I'm also going to uh, launch this app on App Store uh, on Mac OS and iOS both. So please do not uh, just uh, take this project and publish it to App Store. You can use this to get help to develop your own apps. And that is it for today. And I hope you liked this video. And if you did like it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you get notified whenever i upload a new video and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye